week, uh, our, our staff, and, and by that I mean Chad and I sat down and added up um, all of the estimates from all of our departments as far as current property damage. Some of this is still to be bid. Um, obviously, some of this will be eligible for reimbursement um, through FEMA at the 75% rate. These do not fall into category A or B. So we're not under the, the time constraint that we are with some of the other things that we're working on right now. But it looks like right now, estimate numbers that we're gonna be around $1.5 million in, in county property damage um, to our facility. So we'll, we will see, hopefully that number will go down some. Some of this will obviously be covered by insurance, um, but that's the total amount based on our current estimate. So I felt like that that might be a question that you all got asked, and I wanted to give you a rough number there. Again, it is a very rough number um, in, some, in some areas, and I think that it, it probably will be whenever we move, move forward and we get everything. But this is some of our small project stuff, um, not all of our, our big stuff. And I noticed, I'm sure y'all looked at it, but there's a big chunk of space y'all in front of this building. That's right. That's right. Does that include like uh, parks and rec? No. No, all of that is separate. Um, and that's one of the things that Ashley spent a fair amount of time over the last week is um, parks and rec and the hospital and um, tourism, even in some of those other areas. They have to write their own projects with FEMA. We are certainly here to be an advocate and, and to help them through that process if someone's got some questions on, on how they do that. Um, but we, um, every everyone has to write their own. And all the cities are individual, that's just for the unincorporated area. Uh, also, I know last week we talked about the crossover in the contract to the core as it relates to debris management. All of that is still on track. Um, just remember that we may see a, several days of slowdown in that process as all those trucks have to be recertified and we move over to the core. Um, but that will stop the bleed where our general fund is concerned that those are dollars that we won't have to worry about fighting to get back from FEMA um, in the eventual end. And in the meantime, Public Works will still be running their trucks. So with the, the purchase of the new Barco last year and some of those things, we've got some equipment that we didn't have before, so we don't intend on stopping debris removal altogether. We will just scale down to what we're able to do until we pick back up um, with the contractor. Um, I'll be speaking to the Pine Grove Elementary fifth grade in the morning at 9.15 on elections. If any of you would like to join me um, so that we can introduce them to a real live elected official, you guys are welcome to to join me in the morning at Pine Grove at 9.15. <laughs> it, it will be the second round of Meet the Candidate this week, Mr. Commissioner Weisenbaker. Um, then also we will be hosting the Chamber Membership 101 at the Historic Courthouse next Wednesday, October the 30th at 8 a.m. I know the Chamber is a huge partner for us. I know that some of you may have businesses that have been Chamber members in the past, um, but this is an opportunity for you to hear firsthand um, how that integration into the Chamber's programs work for Chamber members, if that's something that you're interested in from the business community side of things. Also on November the 8th, we will be um, a part of a benefit concert um, that has been um, planned by several members of the community and it's going to be held at Unity Park beginning at 4 p.m. Um, so this is an opportunity for citizens, anyone who attends, it's a free concert, but there'll be QR codes there so that people can make a donation if they would like. Um, also, One Dollar Salon has agreed to match those donations up to a certain dollar amount, and that funding will go directly to the United Way. Um, I think that you know, the United Way has their annual campaign that they are responsible for funding their nonprofits every year. In addition to that, they're also managing a tremendous load as it relates to the hurricane donations, so it's important that we keep those hurricane donations coming in and getting to the citizens and the groups and the nonprofits that those funds need to get to, keeping in mind that there's also dollars that need to be um, gathered and raised and, and taken care of as far as regular operations that will go out through the next year with the United Way. So we're, we're hoping that, that that concert's gonna help with that too. And then on November the 9th, we will be hosting the uh, Fall Girls on the Run run at the Historic Courthouse. And this is gonna run the same route that the 911 run um, runs down Patterson Street. Um, but we're gonna have a, a, big, a big pink party uh, at the Historic Courthouse. And we hope that you guys will all come out. This is again an initiative that we're working with Girls on the Run, the City of Alvasta is, is handling some of those logistics. We'll have a big group of our employees out there that are volunteering. Um, Commissioner Evans and I have 
have have been been the face of the county from the girl side of things there, and and the chairman has come out and has been a part of um, of that of that effort as well. And um, I know that all of you at least got a 5K in you, so um, we look forward to to seeing you seeing you out there. And um, this is a walk run opportunity. We also need some volunteers to I do walk run run. right to stand in driveways to make sure that we don't have any um, cars that that pull out during the during the process. But um, I am, um, I'm looking down at, uh, at four girl dads, just, just right here. So um, I look forward to, to seeing all of you gentlemen um, out there and it'll, it'll be a good day. And it'll be over soon. That, that entire event lasts a couple hours, just so I have plenty of time on Saturday to 